In this video, we'll talk about an important network algorithm for finding paths between nodes. When we discuss the bridges of Königsberg, we implicitly introduce the idea of a path or a walk on a network. In networks, distance can be a subtle concept. What do we mean by the distance between two web pages or between two people in a social network? The physical distance may not be relevant. I know many people in Australia, but I don't know anyone from Portsmouth. In networks, distance is replaced by path length. A path is a route that runs along the links in a network. The length of a path is the number of links it uses. Sometimes, when we say a path, we mean a path where every node that is visited is unique, so we don't allow any loops. Here's an example of a path from node A to node G of length 4. Formally, a path is an ordered set of edges, and the path length is the number of elements in that set. The shortest path between two nodes is also called the distance between those nodes. Here it's hopefully clear that the shortest path between A and G is of length 3, so the distance between A and G is 3. There is another path, not shown, of the same length. The diameter of a network is the largest distance between any two nodes. It is the longest shortest path. In this network, the longest shortest path is 4, so the diameter of this network is 4. For a weighted network, the weights often represent something like a cost or a distance function. For example, the path between A and C here is twice as expensive as the path between A and B. Thus, when computing shortest paths or other path-based metrics, we have to weight each link. For the rest of this video, I'll discuss unweighted paths for simplicity. Usually, the extension to weighted paths is fairly straightforward. The adjacency matrix can be used to think about paths. By definition, if there is a path of length 1 between i and j, then the ij element of the adjacency matrix equals 1. If there is a path that goes from i to j via an intermediate node k, then the matrix element aik is 1 and the matrix element aki is 1, so their product is also 1. If either of the links is missing, one of the terms is 0, so the product is 0. If we sum over all the possible intermediate points in the network, this gives the number of paths of length 2 from node i to node j. If you have ever studied linear algebra, this should remind you of the rule for matrix multiplication. If we multiply the adjacency matrix by itself, that is, square it, then the elements of the result count the number of paths of length 2 between every pair of nodes. We can do a similar thing for paths of length 3. We cube the adjacency matrix, and the result is a matrix where the elements tell us the number of paths of length 3 between every pair of nodes. So powers of the adjacency matrix give us counts of paths. However, this is not a practical algorithm for pathfinding. Matrix multiplication is a numerically very expensive operation. Here's an example of a Google Maps route from the University of Exeter Labour Building to Exeter Cathedral. The roads in Exeter can be represented as a network, with the length or average driving times perhaps as weights. The network could be directed to deal with one-way systems, but those details needn't concern us for now. Even in a small city, the road network can be quite complex. Making an adjacency matrix of the Exeter road network and doing matrix multiplications is not practical. In reality, a much more efficient algorithm is used to find shortest paths. Breadth-first search is a very common algorithm for exploring a network. It's so common it's often shortened to the acronym BFS. To find the shortest path between i and j, we start at i and label that node 0. We then go to its neighbours, that is the nodes directly connected to the starting node, and give them the label 1, then add them to a queue. We then take nodes out of the queue and check their neighbours, giving unlabeled neighbours the label 1 plus the label of the node we chose from the queue. We keep removing and adding from the queue until we run out of nodes or we reach the target j. The label of the node j is the distance between the starting node i and the node j. If the target node has no label, when we run out of nodes, then it can't be reached from node i. In this case, we say that the distance between i and j is infinite. Hopefully an example will make this a bit more clear. Let's look at the path starting from node e. We label that node 0. Its neighbours are c and f, those get the label 1 and are added to the queue. We then look at the neighbours of the nodes in the queue, labelling them by incrementing the labels of their origins. We finish off the search by labelling the nodes b and h. Since these have no unlabeled neighbours, we're done. The labels of each of the nodes tell us the distance from E to any of the other nodes. So the shortest path from E to B, for example, has length 3. This is much more efficient than multiplying out the adjacency matrices, which require something like n squared multiplications, where n is the number of nodes. This algorithm at worst, that is, if we don't find a target, has to explore all the nodes in the network and all the edges. So the computational complexity, that is the number of operations we have to do, is proportional to the number of nodes or the number of edges, whichever is larger. Here's a disconnected network. Imagine if the telephone network was disconnected, for example. 
If this was the case, it would not be possible to route calls between certain numbers, so any phone would not be able to call any other valid phone number, which would be a disaster. This means there has to be a path between two nodes and the network must be connected. When working with networks computationally, we often have something like this, an edge list. It is much less obvious from the edge list that the network is connected or disconnected, so we need algorithmic ways to detect if the network is composed of multiple pieces. A network is connected if there is a path between any two nodes, otherwise it's disconnected. One way to detect this is to measure the shortest path between all pairs of nodes. If any shortest paths are infinite, that is, there is no path between some nodes, then the network is disconnected. Often an algorithm like BFS is used to identify the different components and then we can either try to connect them or analyze the components separately. A final bit of terminology to end the video. A single link that connects two components is called a bridge. The link in red is a bridge. Another way to think of a bridge is a link that, if cut, divides the network into two components. Clearly bridges are very important links to identify in a network analysis.